Hi guys, welcome to the realm of astrology. I am Ria and today I am going to take you through the astrology for the new moon in Aquarius happening on Jan 31st or Feb 1st 2022 depending on your location. So let's get started. Now the first thing is the new moon, right? So what is a new moon? A new moon is when the moon and the sun meet up just as they have right here on the chart and that's a new moon and typically a new moon is a seeding point. It's a beginning point of something and this new moon is no different. Now this new moon is happening in the sign of Aquarius. You can see this right here Aquarius. So it will touch upon Aquarian themes. What are those themes? Aquarius is all about your uniqueness. It's the rebel. It's about rebellion. It's about your authenticity, right? Being your true, unique, authentic self. It's about awakening fully. It's about raising your vibration. It's about raising your consciousness. Aquarius is about progress. It's about science. It's about technology. It's about innovation. It's the sign that rules humanity and equality. So all these things are Aquarius. So in many ways, this new moon will touch upon Aquarian themes. Now you can see on the chart, this new moon is happening at 12 degrees and 20 minutes of Aquarius, right? Which means look for 12 degrees, 20 minutes of Aquarius in your chart. And that's where this new energy is coming in for you, that particular house. So say if it's your fourth house, Aquarius, 12 degrees, 20 minutes lies in your fourth house, then there'll be new energy coming into the fourth house. Fourth house matters like home, family, etc. So that's where this new energy will come in for you, wherever 12 degrees, 20 minutes of Aquarius is. Now let's talk about the aspects this moon is making, right? Because that kind of tells you how the energy is going to manifest. So this new moon, the first important aspect is it is making is a square to Uranus. 90 degree angle right and in astrology a square a 90 degree angle represents friction it represents change and growth right and you can see that the moon squared runs a little bit before it became this new moon you can say and what that means is that this new moon can bring about sudden changes insights epiphanies, realizations. And that's because Uranus right here is the planet of sudden change. It's the planet of unexpected change. It's the planet of realizations and epiphanies and aha moments, right? And Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius. Uranus rules Aquarius. So that is significant as well. So Uranus' sudden changes, its insights, its epiphanies, its realizations, and now it's making a stressful aspect, you can say, with the new moon, which means that this new moon can bring with it unexpected changes, it can bring with it insights, it can bring with it aha moments, realizations. Uranus is also the awakener, right? Because it rules Aquarius and Aquarius is about raising your vibration and consciousness. So in many ways, Uranus in this aspect can also lead to raising your vibration. It can also lead to raising your consciousness, awakening. And in and Aquarius is highlighted, right? It's in Aquarius and it is aspecting the ruler of Aquarius. So all these are possibilities with its aspect to Uranus, awakenings, um, realizations, insights, epiphanies, sudden changes, unexpected changes, breakthroughs, right? However, this is a 90 degree angle which represents friction. So this change, these, these realizations, these epiphanies, this awakening or raising of our vibration can come about with a little bit of stress. It can come about with a feeling of feeling some sort of pressure, right? Because that's what a square is. A square is so much pressure that because of that pressure, we are forced to change. We are forced to grow. We are forced to evolve. 
So that's the most important aspect. There's another very, very important aspect as well. So let's look at that. The second aspect that is extremely important that this moon is making is a conjunction to Saturn, right? You can see this right here. Now, Saturn in many ways is the opposite of Uranus, you can say, right? Uranus is the one that likes to break the rules, whereas Saturn is all about following the rules. Saturn is about decisions. It's about commitment. It's about doing things slowly for the long run. It's about committing to things. It's about setting things in stone. And in many ways, if Uranus is about breaking free and rebellion, Saturn is about being restricted, following the rules, feeling slightly limited as well. So with this aspect, what could be happening is that this new moon can also bring with it decisions, Saturn, commitments, Saturn, setting things in stone, Saturn, defining things, Saturn, a feeling of feeling slightly restricted and limited, Saturn, right? And if you see the chart, the moon first will square Uranus and then after this new moon will conjunct Saturn, right? And what this means to me is that after we have this feeling of feeling slightly under pressure that can bring about changes insights, realizations, growing spiritually, raising our vibration, that leads to a decision and commitment or setting things in stone or feeling slightly restricted, right? Now, all these things need not be very big. It could be something really small playing out in your life. It could be something like this, right? Say you have a realization about a project that you're working on let's just say that right because let's say this new moon is happening in your 10th house of business and career just an assumption but this is just an example so it's happening in that house and you have this idea this realization connected to business but what's happening is you think it's a great idea but you feel restricted because you're not able to implement it for some reason. Maybe the investment is too much. Maybe it's not the right time. Maybe it's something that will make more sense down in the future. So little things like this, you know, it could be something major as well, but it doesn't have to be something very major. Now, that was the second aspect. The third aspect this moon is making is a sextile to Chiron, 60 degree angle, right? And Chiron is the planet of our wounds, it's the planet of our pain, but it's also the planet that heals us. And in many ways, the healing that comes with Chiron is bittersweet, and the healing that comes with Chiron comes from ourselves. And that's because Chiron is the wounded healer who healed himself, right? So that's Chiron energy, and now it's aspecting the moon. So what this could mean is, and it's a positive aspect, that this new moon can also bring with it some healing. And this healing can be a healing to our identity. Chiron is an Aries, the sign of our identity, of our ego. And Aquarius is our unique self as well. So it could very well be some healing to our identity. But this healing usually comes from our own self, from within. So that's another important aspect. And it could be that the healing that we receive, that we receive and that we give to ourselves with the aspect to Chiron, then leads to changes and realizations and epiphanies and raising our vibration, which then leads to commitments or decisions or a feeling of slight, feeling slightly limited and restricted. So these are the three important aspects this moon is making. Now, there are a few other things that are going on on this new moon that I'd like to mention real quick. So let's just talk about those. And the first is that Venus right here has is direct now, right? It was retrograde since December 19th, 2021. And it came out of retrograde on Jan 29th, so over the weekend. And Venus retrograded in the sign of Capricorn right here, 
right? And Venus retrograded in Capricorn after eight years. The last time Venus retrograded in Capricorn was 2013, December 2014, Jan. So this Venus retrograde, which started on December 19th and ended on Jan 29th, 2022, was all about reviewing our relationships and projects with the idea of transforming them, with the idea of figuring out what we need to end, what we need to begin, what we need to change, what we need to let go of when it comes to relationships and projects. So that was the basic theme and it also required us to figure out what we can commit to for the long run, what relationship, what project can we be serious about because it retrograded in Capricorn. Capricorn is all about serious commitments. It's about the long run. It's about doing things slowly, but for the long run. So that was Venus retrograde and up until Jan 29th, it was more of a review when it came to our projects and relationships. But now that Venus has gone direct, the forward movement connected to these things can really start. And that's because we've done the review work, right? We know what to do. We know what changes to make. We know where to go when with our relationships and projects. Now, this Venus is also in a trine with Uranus, right? So on this new moon, we can also get ideas and epiphanies and realizations about our relationships and projects, Venus, or our appearance or our self-worth as well, Venus. So that's another thing going on in the background. And, and the reason I brought this up is because first of all, Mars here is going to cover the degrees that Venus retrograded over, right? And what that means is that after the review that we've done for the past 40 days or so, we are ready to take action. We're ready to take action and make things happen. Mars, Mars is taking action. Mars is getting things done. And Mars here is going to go over those degrees in a few days time. It's at five degrees of Capricorn. It will cover 11 to 26 of Capricorn in the next few days. So we'll begin to take action and do things that we reviewed, that we thought of changing, connected to relationships, projects, self-worth, values, and appearances, Venus. So that's the first thing. And this new moon might help with that, right? Because Venus here is in a trine with Uranus on this new moon. And another thing is that Mercury here is still retrograde. It will go out of retrograde on Feb 3rd, so a couple of days from now. And Mercury retrogrades are a period of review for our communication, our day-to-day, -day, our diet, lifestyle, routine, health, job, things like that. And the reason I bring this up is because in two days' time, Mercury will also go direct, which means that all planets are direct, right? Starting Feb 3rd, all planets will be direct. We'll have absolutely no energy retrograde, right? Uranus is direct, Chiron, Neptune, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, Mercury will go direct in two days time, Venus and Mars. Now this is very different from the new moon we entered this year with the new moon in Capricorn because we had Venus retrograde at that time and shortly after Jan 14th, I believe Mercury went retrograde and Uranus was also retrograde on the last new moon. So what this means is in two days time, we can really start to take action, make things happen. And that's what a new, new moon is all about. It's about beginnings. It's about seeding things. It's about starting things. So that's something to consider. And the last thing that I want to touch upon, actually the second last thing that I want to touch upon is that Pluto here, is trining the North Node. Not exact, not yet, but it will get exact on Feb 14th. So it's pretty close, right? And Pluto trining the North Node, let's break this energy down. Pluto is the planet of transformation. It's the planet of letting go, of releasing, of catharsis, of beginnings, of endings. That's Pluto. It's spiritual transformation as well. And what is the North Node? The North Node right here and the South Node, they are usually, they are in opposition, right? You'll always find them opposing one another. 
And the notes changed signs a few days ago on Jan 18th after an 18 month cycle, right? They changed signs. And now the North Node is in Taurus and the South Node is in Scorpio, which is a different energy than we had on the new moon last month. The new moon in Capricorn had the nodes in Sag and Gemini. So now this is different as well. And the North Node right here, Rahu, is the future. It's where we are headed. It's a karmic, karmic point. And Rahu, the North Node right here, is trining Pluto. Right? And what this could mean is that we are transforming we are where we are headed. We are changing up where we are headed, Pluto. It could be that we've ended a particular path or are in the process of ending a particular path and beginning a new one, Pluto, right? Because on Feb 14th, this trine will come exact. So up until then, maybe we'll figure things out and all that. But this is about transforming where we are headed. So this is one of those points. And this can also be about finding the truth connected to the future, connected to where we are headed. Because Pluto is also about uncovering the truth. It's about digging deep and finding the truth. So it could be that we figure something about where we are headed, our path, our goals. We discover some truth connected to that. Or we simply transform where we are headed. So these are the possibilities of this aspect. And at the same time, it is sextiling the South Node, right? And Pluto is about letting go. In many ways, it's about letting go. So it could be that it makes it easier for us to let go of the past, this aspect. And this aspect will come exact on Feb 14th. So in this new moon cycle itself. And the last point that I want to talk about is, let me clean up the chart first, is that this new moon is happening in Aquarius, right? And Aquarius is very significant. First of all, it is significant because we had the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction in the sign of Aquarius, right? Right here, zero degrees of Aquarius in December of 2020. I know this is a while ago, but it is important because that started a new 20-year cycle, right? That Saturn-Jupiter conjunction in the sign of Aquarius at zero degrees. And this Saturn-Jupiter cycle is a 20-year cycle. And in Aquarius, it's about Aquarian themes. And we touched upon those themes in the beginning of the video, but real quick, it's about innovation, it's about progress, it's about science, it's about equality, it can, it can be about rebellion as well. It's about finding our unique, authentic voice as well. Aquarius, among other things. And it is after 200 years that Saturn and Jupiter met up in an air sign. Before that, for 200 years, every 20 years, they would meet up in Earth signs, right? The last time they met up in the year 2000, they met up in Taurus, the sign of Taurus, which is an earth sign. And why this is significant is that when the element changes, there's a significant change that we can expect. In earth, the cycles were all about finding security, right? Finding our resources, earth, being stable and being secure. But now they are happening in air signs, the conjunction starting this one in 2020. And what that means is the themes have shifted slightly from finding our security, from um, finding our stability, from finding our resources, food, water, all those things, resources, right? Now there's a shift to air. Air is intellectual. Air is about technology. Air is about the mind it's about communication so in many ways the themes that will be highlighted from now on will be these air themes communication intellectual intellectual things and connecting right connecting with people so 
These are the themes that will shift in general, but let's come back to this. Why this is relevant is because in 2021, last year, right, we did have a new moon in Aquarius, but after the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction in Aquarius, which happened on December in December 2020, right, we had a new moon in Feb 2021, and then on that new moon, we still had the Taurus cycle energy with us, the Saturn-Jupiter-Taurus conjunction, which happened in 20, uh, 2000, was still there with us in some ways. In May, with the new moon in Taurus, May of 2021, that energy of the past Saturn-Jupiter cycle of 2000 ended, right? But since then, since May of 2021, we have not had a new moon in Aquarius. This is the first one, which means this is a powerful activation point for that Saturn-Jupiter conjunction, which happened in December of 2020. So it's an activation point for that energy. So we might start to see glimpses of that on this, starting with this new moon, but it is going to activate that Aquarian energy more. So that was the last thing I wanted to touch upon. And to sum it up, I would say that this new moon can feel slightly challenging. It is making two challenging aspects, a square to Uranus and a conjunction to Saturn, but there is some healing in this uh, new moon and this healing will need to come from within. It can lead to changes, it can lead to insights, epiphanies, realizations, as well as decisions, commitments and setting things in stone. And since this new moon cycle is a cycle where all planets will be direct, the forward movement that has been pretty slow since the beginning of the year because Venus was retrograde, Uranus was retrograde, Mercury went retrograde midway through Jan. Now is the time where the forward movement, taking action, getting things done will start to happen a bit more than Jan, I would say. And also because Mars here will move on and cover degrees where both Venus and Mercury retrograded over. Right, first the degrees that Venus retrograded over, then it'll start to overlap with the degrees that Mercury retrograded over. So we'll see all these things. And it can also reveal a truth. It can also reveal some information that is destined, that is karmic about the future or about where we are headed. So that's the new moon in Aquarius energy and now I will pick a few cards for this new moon and let's get started. Let's start with this deck. It says power. I think this new moon might help us uncover our power, our potential. Pluto is the planet of power, right? And it is trining the North Node. So maybe in some ways, through transforming where we are headed, maybe uncovering some truth, we might find some power. Let's go with one more. Freedom. This is Aquarius, right? And I didn't mention this word in the reading. I did not say Aquarius is freedom. If there's one sign that's about freedom, it's Aquarius. Uranus is freedom. It wants to free you from anything that binds you from you being you. So maybe this new moon, and it's happening in Aquarius, or Uranus ruled energy, is about finding our freedom and our power. Because often what happens our power is connected to our freedom. Our power is connected to our unique, authentic self. When we can free ourselves from the bondages that we put on ourselves, right? I should be this. I should say this. I should do this. This is what I want to be rather than saying, okay, this is who I am. I'm going to embrace myself. I am good the way I am. I, appre uh, I appreciate myself. I accept myself. If you start to say that, no, I don't like who I am. I need to be different. I need to change who I am in order for me to like myself. And that's the problem. And Uranus will say, no, you need to accept your unique self. You need to accept your true, authentic self. And in that, 
there is freedom in that there is power and Aquarius is all about that so that's pretty much it for this new moon and I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time now bye